And then when we get 100 patrons, I'm spraying, well, Ood spraying me in the face with pepper spray. Hmm. Oh, that's fun. Sounds awful. Warning, this podcast contains violence, sexuality, gore, and other horrible and disturbing things. Listener discretion is advised. Also, the hosts of this venture are ignorant dipshits, so please do not take anything they say as fact. And enjoy the show. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good, then we'll begin. The day we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. The atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. It is our basic human right to be forgot. A second plane now has crashed into the other tower of the World Trade Center. Put chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. The defendant shall be incarcerated for the rest of her natural life with no possibility of parole. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. 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 Welcome to Occulte Veritatis. I am Ood Gallifrey. I'm Leon Felger. Oh, fuck. You got in there quick. <laughs> I wanted it. <laughs> I am Sage Murray. And in the studio with us, Emmy. Yay. Yeah, let's do What's Your Poison? What's Your Poison? So, what's your poison? Uh, today, since we're talking about, you know, a uh, creepy podcast staple as basic as Bigfoot, we're going with the basic beer, and that is Bud Light. It's not even a, ba- it's a basement beer. A basement beer? There's nothing basic about it. I forgot to drink it again. That's you just spilled it all over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you drunk bastard. I'm not even drunk. I'm just clumsy. <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. It's nondescript. It's it's shit. I'm not even gonna put it in my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not happening. Kill Emmy hates it. It's <laughs> like it's. It, I mean, I, I'm. I wouldn't call myself a beer snob or a connoisseur. Yeah. But this is shit. Yeah. It's Bud I'd Light. still drink I mean, it. Whatever. Yeah. It's first of all, no Canadian has any business drinking a Budweiser product north of the border. Yeah. I mean, as someone who spends a good deal of time in the states, American Bud. It's a is a decent beer. I would drink that if it's on tap. You no. Know. Yes, American Bud wow. in America is a fine beer. Mm. In Canada, it's shit, and Bud Light is the worst. Bud Light is shit on You're either the worst. side of the border. Yeah. Are you talking yes. about? Are you talking about relatively compared to other beers that are available, or um, is it different by region? Like, I mean, I I spend like I live in Washington State part of the time, and like mm. Rainier Lager, for example, which is like the the O sixteen of of the Northern Cascades, yeah. is a really fantastic beer that's on tap everywhere. I would drink it before Budweiser, but Budweiser is on tap in every bar I assume in the United States. Yeah, yeah. and I don't it's know. shit everywhere, but it's still a hell of a lot better than Budweiser here, which is a hell of a lot better than Bud Light anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's if this beer was a person, they'd be on life support. Oh damn! Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's just, it's just tasteless and inoffensive, and it has no real flavor. It's just cold and wet, and that's about and it. And carb, carbonatedy. Yeah, it's kind of flat. You're kind of flat. I don't like it. My bladder's full. I gotta pee right now, so I'm already annoyed, and I know that I'm putting this in me, which is filling my bladder even more. <laughs> we can take a time out, and you can go pee. I might just leave. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. No. I think I did that during like the uh, last couple episodes. I just like left. I'm right going. <laughs> I don't even dislike it. It just has so little of substance. I have to give it a two out of ten. Yeah, I give it a three. Like it, whatever. I drink it to get drunk. But yeah, it's, I, you know, whatever. I'm gonna rate it one mind count out of two Dianetics and a Fundamentals of Scientology. Oh boy, <laughs> it makes me sad just being the same room as it. So. Yeah. Oh yes. Amy's a hard pass. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. Cr- you hurt its feelings. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's so mean. This beer just got colder. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. We're in eastern New York State, within an hour of New York City, in pursuit of Bigfoots in the Catskill Mountains. Cliff met with a local eyewitness who claims to have had a terrifying physical confrontation with what he believes was a Bigfoot. I heard the distinctive steps coming straight down the hill. 
Next thing I know, the tent is being pushed in. He screamed and, and, and it just backed off. The next thing I remember is that light was, light was coming up. When the thing was pushing in on the tent on your girlfriend, do you know if it pushed from a, a downward direction or sideways or how? It seemed more actually like a combination, like down, down but sorry. in at the same time. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised to hear that that's actually been reported on several other occasions. Robert's encounter is interesting. Even though he didn't see a Sasquatch, almost everything he said points to a Sasquatch. To get a better idea of how far away this thing was and what it sounded like, I had Robert turn around for a little listening experiment. Can you hear that? Yes. Do you think there's any possibility that you could have been listening to a quadrupedal animal? No, no way. No way, huh? No way. Your footprints, uh, your stepping was not quite as loud. They were, these, these were loud. They sounded heavy. They sounded they very deliberate, heavy sounding, but it was definitely bipedal. It was pitch dark. No human was walking around on that kind of slope out in the middle of nowhere and, and doing that in pitch darkness without tripping, falling, or making any noise. Everything that you've told me points to a Sasquatch encounter, even though you didn't see one. And in fact, even you not seeing one points to a Sasquatch encounter, because most of the time people don't see them. What are we doing, Bigfoot? We're doing Bigfoot. I'm I was so once excited. married to Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. And she used to squeeze me because she wanted me to die. Well, Did she call you George and said she'd love you and oh squeeze God. you and pet you? Alrighty, so Rugaru is what the Ojibwe indigenous people call Bigfoot. Fine. No, that's the... R R Rugaru is a werewolf. Well, that's what the uh, that's what the Ojibwe people call them. <laughs> Did you check their website? <laughs> yes, it was on there. <laughs> Ojibwe.com. <laughs> Tells you everything. Slash, I'm super white, sorry, <laughs> slash, sorry. Oh, no, it, it was their it was their tribal website. Okay. Uh, There's probably a white person maintaining the website. How's it spelled? I'm really judging. <laughs> R-U-G-A-R-U. -R Steve. Rigaru. Oh, that's Steve. You have a guinea pig named Steve. Okay, that, that's different than what I was thinking then. Uh, I'll allow it. <laughs> it's in, still indigenous. In Mexico today, uh, they call Bigfoot Sir Rakawa. They have cool. Bigfoot in Mexico? Oh, yes. You How? Know, an extensive range. Oh, yes. I've been to Mexico. He's not there. <laughs> Me too. The Australian, the Australian indigenous people. There'd be nowhere people. to hide. Have you seen Mexico? It's not lush. No, it's like very packed. Like you see in the pictures. It's terrible. Yeah. Not and really the, I, hide. Did I tell you what happened to me in Mexico? No. I spent 20 pesos on what had to have been a half a kilo of weed, and I literally fucking smoked it all. Didn't get high. Jesus. What? Like, I was to the point where my lungs were fucking collapsing. <laughs> and then I paid all this money for a trip. Are you familiar with Hurricane Hugo? Oh, no. Hurricane Hugo showed up. The beach had to have been like a good hundred feet from my balcony, like to the ocean. Beautiful. I woke up the day after Hurricane Hugo. There was no fucking beach. It's too I still had two days in Mexico. It's too bad all that weed was shitty. The the, the weed would have made the hurricane a lot better. I tried to get so high. I tried so hard. <laughs> so hard. You to meant get high. well. And I wasn't drinking at the time, so I I tried. I tried like, my God, did I ever try to get high? And I couldn't. And I've never tried so hard and failed in my life. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> uh, the Australian ah, indigenous ah. people call Bigfoot Dulegal. Ooh, cool. And the people of Australia just call whoa, 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 Bigfoot Yowie. Yahweh? That's God. Yeah, Yahweh no. is God. No, Yahweh. Oh. How do they... No, this is bullshit. First of all, they have yeah. kangaroos in Australia. Yeah. We have Bigfoots in Canada. Yeah. Well, we don't. That's big bullshit. Feet? I don't... We have big feet. <laughs> Bigfoots. They're big, Bigfoots. Big feeted. Big feet? We have Bigfoots in Canada. Yes. There's a, and we don't have a, kangaroos in Canada. Yeah. There's no way they have that range. It's horseshit. Your entire episode is falling apart. No, it's it could be like different names for a similar it, creature. It, it could be just like, like bears. God. It's not like we believe any of this anyway. It could be like bears. Like maybe there's like different I for, species I of Bigfoot. I believe in Sam's Quanches. Have Sam Quanches? Sasquatch is the British Columbian Sasquatch. Yes. In uh, Nova Scotia, they're called Sam Squanch. Sam Squanch. <laughs> I'm squinching. Uh, in Africa, they call their Bigfoot uh, Kakuanduk. That's just Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Shut up. In China, they call Bigfoot. That's good cider. Nayalmo. And in Florida, they call it the Skunk Ape. Yeah, I've heard of that. Of course they do. I've heard that. 
Alrighty. Uh, how? What percentage of worldwide sightings do you think happen in the Pacific Northwest? Nine. Like, a, like, like 90? Most of them. Most of them. They have nothing better to do. Yeah. I've been there. I live there. Yeah. There's nothing to do. I lived in to... Vancouver for like five years. I lived the Pacific. That's hardly the Pacific Northwest. Shut That's the face. Canadian Southwest. Shut your dirty whore mouth. <laughs> So when you look Go back at, to your home on Whore Island. <laughs> so when you look at the worldwide sightings of Bigfoot, Yeti, Yowie, whatever, a third of them come from the Pacific Northwest. And that's, that's good. specifically British Columbia from Canada, Washington, and Oregon. So two states in a province, that's where a third of the world's Bigfoot sightings happen. As Thanks. someone from Washington, I can assure you Bigfoot lives there. <laughs> I've seen him. His name's Kenny G. He's at the <laughs> fucking, just down the Mount Baker Highway from where I live. Yes. He sits, there's a, a place called the Village Inn. Yeah. Uh, is it the Village Inn? You live in Alberta. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I live in Alberta You're from my home. You're a filthy, dirty liar. No, I live in, in the States part of the time. <laughs> no, there's the fro- it's a call, place called the Frosty Inn on the Mount Baker Highway. And there's a bar stool there where the Sam Squanch used to live. He died. No. no one sits in that stool anymore. It's just empty. And there's not a sign saying don't sit there. It's just the patrons know that's where the Sam Squanch used to sit. Don't sit there anymore. So this dude just... Well, there's nothing left. He's dead. Yeah. Just bellied up to the bar with his like hairy ape face? Yes. Okay. I've never met him. He died before I started going there, but my parents know him. Did he order milk in a dirty glass? No, I think he probably ordered Bud. Oh, probably. That's Basic all they had on tap. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Sam Squanch. That and Rainier. Poor Sam Squanch. That's why he's always hiding in the bush. The beer is horrible. So taking uh, the footprint casts <laughs> and using a human height formula from the length of the footprints and analyzing all the videos and pictures of Bigfoot. I didn't do this work, by the way. This is done by some cryptozoological society. I used to Washington. want to be a cryptozoologist. Really? It's a cryptozoologist. It's like a zoologist for f- made up animals. Mm. You're hunting unicorns. Jersey Devil. You better fucking do an episode on Jersey Devil. Oh, I will. That was my favorite cryptid. No, but unicorns, please do one on unicorns, too. Do one on unicorns. Oh, yeah. I have Natural History of Unicorn in my library right now. And centaurs. Can we combine that with narwhals? Oh, I love narwhals. Because they actually exist. My kid asked for a narwhal stuffed animal the other day. He's like, I would like a narwhal. Do you realize it's just a tooth that pokes... It's, an old yeah. it's a tooth. tooth. It's a big fucking tooth. If it's I were amazing. rich, I would own one and it would be on my wall. Yeah. That makes me uncomfortable that it's a tooth. Yeah, it's just I like a, like it's a, a big spiral tooth. It's pretty impressive. How the fuck did evolution get that one done? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> Magic? God. Did Jesus. It. Actually, you know what? From an evolutionary standpoint, the gigantic spiral tooth is fairly easy to explain. Yeah. So the average- Gallifrey, a little bit trickier. Yes. How did you survive? What, what you is your accent? <laughs> yeah, what I is don't your know. fucking accent? I don't know. I just talk and words come out and something <laughs> happens in between and I'm not sure what. <laughs> there's just there's so something weird happens in there. Yeah, so the average height of the Bigfoot is 7 foot 3 with extremes of up to 9 foot it's 5. It's like you got peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth. Do I? Maybe. <laughs> no. Nope. I don't think so. I love peanut butter, so I think I'd know it was Okay, there. that's it. We're putting out a fucking challenge right now. If you can identify Ood's accent, yes. we'll send you a pic of my dick. Oh, yes. damn. Yeah, if there's any... A boudoir s- photo of my dick. So I'll take it. I'll take the boudoir shadow. photo. And it'll be artsy as hell. So we're looking for the Venn diagram of speech pathologist and want to see Leon's dick. Yes, yeah. Venn okay. diagram. Venn dra- diagram that shit. Beautiful occultist. I will. <laughs> uh, and they have a weight uh, based on different calculations about, you know, are they skinny Bigfoot? Or are they big like Hulk Bigfoot? They could be anywhere from 550 pounds to 2,030 pounds. 2,030 pounds? That's bullshit. That's too no, big. Sunk into the earth. How many other animals are 2,030 pounds? I don't know. Bears. You're a bear. Big bears. Big bears. Uh, they have red, brown, dark red, or black hair. And they have a crested forehead like a gorilla. And that suggests that they eat a lot of plants. Because gorillas need lots of jaw muscles to chew 10 hours a day. And if Bigfoot have those crests, then they're chewing 10 hours a day too. Oh, well, I eat plants... Because I'm, I'm an annoying vegetarian. Mm. But I don't have a crested forehead. I think it's rather smooth and dainty. You're not eating 20 pounds of them a day, though. You are correct. Yes. I am not. <laughs> uh, they also are reported to have a strong odor. The most common scents reported are the scent of fresh poop and rotten vegetables. Gross. Okay, I don't have that scent. I am <laughs> apparently not a Bigfoot. Yeah. Congratulations. Cleared up. You think it, you think they wouldn't if they're trying to hide? They w- like evolution would favor them not being so damn stinky. Well, maybe that's like that's like a like a natural stinky though. 
Oh, maybe. Also, if you think about those things, like those are deterrents, right? Most critters don't want to go near poop. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Maybe Unless some, you're my fucking gross dog. <laughs> maybe it's a stinky dogs. thing. Ugh. Their They're footprints dumb. are up to 24 inches long, so two feet long and eight inches wide. That's too big. Yes. And they're usually described as ob- omnivorous in the cases that people apparently saw them eating. They've been eating plants and meat, and they're nocturnal because people usually see them early in the morning or late at night. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the earliest sighting of the Bigfoot was an account of the Nuka Sound by Jose uh, Monzino. Where is that? Uh, he was actually analyzing the Pacific coast of Canada. And he oh, was, okay. He was looking at what was targeting the indigenous people there because they were having complaints of something terrorizing their their tribes and villages. So he went there to investigate. Probably white people. No, probably. Damn white people. Actually, that comes in. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, the beast was described by the indigenous people as bristle-haired, gorilla-like fangs, sharp claws, tall and heavy. So a bit more bestial and ferocious than the regular big. Oh, did you know do. that from the bathroom... You are louder than through the headphones. That's interesting. I know. I, I think I have a, a voice that carries. A very carrying peanut butter stuck through for your mouth voice. You wee do. Wee. <laughs> Apparently, the indigenous tribes there reported that the Bigfoot there, or the Matlog as they called it, cool. uh, avoided white men. Fair enough. And spoke all the tribal and band languages. So they were able to speak the languages of all the indigenous people. And they were seen as a helper to the indigenous people. So that's the way they were portrayed back in uh, Jose uh, Monzino's... Jose. Jose. Sorry, Jose Monzino's An Account of Nuka Sound. Cool. The next sighting is uh, Bigfoot in 1890. There's a bunch of sightings in between, but I'm just going overview of the very important ones. Good call. Uh, Chief Bigfoot, a Lakota leader, uh, was purported to be named after two bears that were named Bigfoot. Apparently, cool. they're this mating pair of bears, and they were just gigantic, like way bigger than all the grizzly bears in the land, and they were collectively named as a couple Bigfoot. And then this chief was named Bigfoot after those bears when he was elected. So that's a purportedly the emergence of the name Bigfoot. That's awesome. Yeah. We have L- Lakota people here in Saskatchewan. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1924, this is the famous story of Albert Ottsman. And he was a wanderlust-filled lumberjack that got kidnapped by Bigfoots, or so he says. Interesting. So he was out scouting for different trees. So he was uh, doing a scouting role for the local logging camp, and he was camping out and looking for spaces of trees to cut down, and he was marking trees. Uh, He was sleeping in a sleeping bag, and he said in the middle of the night, something grabbed the foot of his sleeping bag and began dragging him along the ground. And apparently he was just bumping into the ground, and he was... We really need a camera here because the hand actions you're doing to describe what you're saying are really fascinating. Oh, yes. You are a hand talker. I am. I am. And they're missing out on everything. Um, He he was basically being dragged by this Bigfoot through uh, the trees and brambles, and it was catching on him. And eventually he was able to open up the head of his sleeping bag and get his head and shoulders out. Was he sleeping, like, fully encased in the sleeping bag, like... In a cocoon? I think so, because I think... Like a pupae? I think so. I, uh, maybe it was cold? Because, like, in order to be trapped that hard, you would have to just, like, cinch the top really tight. That's weird. I would yeah. never do that. I'd feel like I was being buried alive. I would get too hot. My breath wouldn't be able to escape. I need, like, fresh air. Yeah. Even when I put, the, like, the covers over my head, and I know that I'm not going to suffocate. You need a fresh be- air port. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, I, like, I need it. I need to, like, create, like, a little area so I can... <laughs> out of it we oui, we oui. uh, he he got his head and shoulders out of the bag and apparently the bigfoot got mad that he was starting to get away so he just grabbed him and slung him over his shoulder like you do like you do <laughs> and he was walking for about four hours or i guess the bigfoot was walking with him on the shoulder for about four hours and he tried to fight back but apparently this thing was big and strong enough that he didn't he didn't put up too much of a fight well, if it's like seven feet tall then you know mm. fair enough yeah, and if it's and if it's on the bigger side, nine feet tall and like fifteen hundred pounds, I mean, you're not gonna mess with that. That's too big. Yeah, he was dropped out of the sleeping bag in a little clearing in a little uh, looks like a little campsite for the for the Bigfoots. Uh, there's an adult male, an adult female, a boy Bigfoot, and a girl Bigfoot. Um, they didn't hurt him. They made it clear that they didn't want to hurt him, but they weren't going to let him leave. Every time that he left, either the mother or the father Bigfoot would go and drag him back. But they were being very careful and gentle not to hurt him. He said that 
It, they were treating him like a newborn kitten. Like, that's how gentle they were being. Do I want to know how he knows their genders? I don't know. Um, you Bigfoot dick. And, and lady, lack thereof. I guess there's big, like, Bigfoot boobs, because they'd be mammals, right? They would breastfeed. Yeah, they would. And if if there's two kids, maybe she's still breastfeeding them. And then know. the nipple and areole would be hairless, like other mammals. Oh, yeah, it would. Yeah, you don't want hair in your milk. No, you don't. Um, Three days, so he stayed with them for three days. Uh, he rode You don't want hair in your milk. No. Good Gallifrey. Yes, that's a hot tip out there. Feel free to follow it. Um, they ate his food, so they ate all the food he brought with them, and they cursely explored and tore apart his equipment, so they were very curious creatures. Uh, the only thing that he had on his person that wasn't in the pack and being raided was his little tin of snuff, so his tin of chewing tobacco. And the, how he got away, purportedly, is he convinced uh, the male, uh, f- I guess, Father Bigfoot to eat the entire tin. So he kind of did monkey see, monkey do, and he took a little... Have you eaten the entire tin of snuff? Do you know how fucking sick you'd be? Oh, yes. You couldn't follow someone, could you? No, no. So he, he took a bit of he took a bit of snuff and he put it in his mouth and he pretended to chew and then he handed it to the Father Bigfoot and apparently he took it and he just dropped it and he just... Oh. He dumped the can in his mouth like Popeye dumped God, spinach. The vomiting. <laughs> Apparently, the father Bigfoot got very, very sick. Yeah, and, no shit. And the mother was taking care of him, and the kids were too small to stop him from getting away, so he got away, and uh, he didn't talk about it for 30 years. Uh, the first time he told the story was 30 years after the incident, and that was after a few more people came forward with similar stories. You wouldn't want to tell anyone, though. Yeah. Because the entire time you accidentally ate an entire chin of chewing tobacco, not knowing you weren't supposed to eat it. You oh, got gross. that fucking sick. Okay, I missed that because I was peeing. The Bigfoot yeah. got sick on chewing tobacco. Well, you, you would. Yeah. yeah. He how ate he, the entire tin of snuff. Yeah, how he got away is he, he played monkey see, monkey do, and he says, see, I eat the snuff, and yum, yum, yum. And then he gave it to the daddy Bigfoot, and the daddy Bigfoot ate the whole thing, and then he just got sick. Oh, you get so viciously ill. You get so viciously One Ill. part of the story that I found fascinating was he heard them talk the whole time to each other. Have you ever had a, like a full cigarette after not smoking for several months? That'll make you sick. Can't say I have. It doesn't. Doesn't? No. Uh, they spoke in <laughs> monosyllabic sentences, which means... Syllabic. S- syllabic. Monosyllabic s- sentences. I think so. Isn't it syllabic? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Monosyllabic. You're wrong. Fuck. Yes. I quit. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Which means they spoke in single syllables. So they spoke like the Jindun from Doctor Who. They just did oh go mo so wo ho do go. I'm not bo. super familiar with Doctor Who, which is bad because I am also a nerd. They're rhino. They're rhino aliens that speak cool. in single syllables. I need to get into that. It's very good. Mm-hmm. It's very cheesy. Sibilic. Syllabic. Syllabic. Yeah. yeah. Fuck me. No, it's like it's a it's a syllable. Yeah, but I thought it was symbolic, like a syllable. Nick, symbolic. No? Syllabic. Shit. That's okay. We still love you. Alrighty, that's where we'll end it this week with me not being able to pronounce a word. Uh, Next week, we'll be diving back into Bigfoot and we'll be looking at the actual evidence for its existence or lack thereof. I guess you'll have to tune in next week to find out. For now... Mike Brown from the Dark Poutine Podcast has been kind enough to make us a little palate cleanser of his own. So instead of a public domain or indie song, we'll be doing his palate cleanser where apparently he goes out into the woods and he interviews Bigfoot on his own. So I hope he's okay and I hope that his investigation reveals some stuff about the Bigfoot. But for this week, I've been Ood Gallifrey with Sage Murray and Leon Filger, and our guest, Emmy. Thank you for coming, and join us next time. Hello, listeners. Uh, Mike Brown here. I'm host of the Dark Poutine podcast, covering Canadian true crimes and other creepy Canadian topics. Uh, I'm on assignment here in the forest, just outside of Harrison, British Columbia. This is one of the Canadian hotspots for Bigfoot sightings. It's a chilly winter day here, and uh, there's no snow on the ground. Uh, uh, and uh, as a result, Bigfoot uh, footprints are going to be a lot harder to see. Um, I haven't seen anything yet. 
Uh, for those of you who have been uh, living under a rock, Bigfoot or Sasquatch is a, a bipedal, upright walking creature that has been uh, mainly associated with the forests of British Columbia and Washington State, uh, the Pacific Northwest. The humanoid creature is reported to be uh, covered in hair, often black, sometimes brown, even orangutan red. Reports say that the uh, massive, heavily muscled cryptid stands anywhere between six to nine feet tall and uh, uh, leaf, leaves footprints uh, from 18 to 24 inches in length, uh, thus the nickname Bigfoot. Uh, stories about the creature have been uh, showing up since the 1860s, and First Nations folklore uh, claims that uh, Sasquatch has been roaming these woods since before mankind arrived in what's estimated to be about 18,000 BC. Uh, one famous local Sasquatch hunter, John Willison Green, he was born in Vancouver in 1927, became interested in Bigfoot as a young man, began looking for Bigfoot himself. Uh, John Green compiled a huge database of over 3,000 Bigfoot sightings uh, in Pacific Northwest and other areas of Canada the United States. Many included the creature's supposed foot impressions that were gathered as plaster casts. Uh, Green was at one time uh, mayor of Harrison Hot Springs nearby here and uh, new owner of the newspaper, the local newspaper. He, uh, he sold out to pursue uh, Bigfoot. He went on to, to found the Kilby British Columbia Historical Society where much of his uh, research can be seen in the museum's exhibits. He wrote six books on the subject himself and has been cited in many others. Green died in 2016 but his legacy lives on and uh, Bigfoot hunting is still uh, a very popular local pastime. Uh, yeah, so uh, according to the Tourism Harrison website, if you suffer from sozantoglitophobia, which is fear of the Sasquatch, or you really don't want to run into Sasquatch, the best thing you could do is not go hiking in the remote areas uh, of known Sasquatch territory, particularly the, the west side of Harrison Lake. Uh, that's where I am right now. As well, the uh, usual warning about uh, not leaving food out there uh, are, uh, and cautions uh, against uh, music quote uh, you'll also want to avoid angering the Sasquatch by playing loud country or folk music with the exception of Stomp and Tom Connors uh, Sasquatch hates country folk music classic rock seems to be okay uh, what a load of shit uh, there are uh, <laughs> also directions around what to do if you actually encounter Sasquatch while out here in the woods and uh they include remaining calm, keeping your distance, uh, shooting at it only with a camera, haha, ha, not making eye contact. Uh, it's pretty high, hard to make uh, eye contact with uh, something that doesn't exist. You know, the internet is overflowing with references to Sasquatch and Bigfoot, and uh, as Rule 34 of the internet states, if it exists or can be imagined, there's internet porn of it. Yes, so listeners, Bigfoot porn is uh, no exception to the rule. It exists and is plentiful. I warn you, although we tried to uh, find some of the tamer references, the following is graphic and for some may be disturbing. You've been warned. This is from Volume 1 of Virginia Wade's offering on the topic of Bigfoot porn, Come for Bigfoot. We have the following here. Uh, the bliss of this encounter should not be understated. Mating with an animal, part man, part beast, was an un as unthinkable as having sex with a donkey. And yet here I was, reveling in the experience and not wanting it to end. No, I did not write that. Virginia Wade wrote that. Remember this. This was not me. And further on, Virginia Wade writes, He grunted and then hel held himself, nodding fervently. I knew what he wanted. How on earth uh, would I fit that thing in my mouth? Oh, my God. Like, seriously? I had to read all 16 volumes of Come, to, Come for Bigfoot uh, to ensure I gave it a fair shake. The descriptions of sexual encounters with Bigfoot are detailed in many. Uh, as well, my research had me pouring through titles like 
broken in by the Bigfoot, uh, carrying Bigfoot's baby. He's even bigger where it counts. Uh, two, big feet, two big feet, one girl, like really. And uh, not to leave out the homosexual segment of the population, Bigfoot's gay. Uh, there are literally hundreds of titles, uh, and many are available on Amazon Kindle Unlimited to read with your monthly th- subscription. Like, who on earth just, like, enjoys this shit? Anyway, uh, there are many Sasquatch hunting groups in the area here, uh, also known as whack jobs who need their heads read. Uh, they claim there are many ways to attract a Bigfoot. The first, of course, uh, is with their favorite foods, apparently nuts, seeds, and berries. Not sure how anyone actually knows that. Oh, hello, Bigfoot. Uh, what do you like to eat? Oh, berries. Oh, great, great, fantastic. Bullshit. Anyway, uh, I brought a five-pound bag of trail mix with me. Uh, here it is. Uh, uh, I've been spreading it uh, behind me as I walk. Still no Bigfoot. Also, uh, howling like the creature is also a means of uh, Bigfoot attraction. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, see, nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, wood knocks, wood knocks. Uh, let, let's see, here we go. See, uh, nothing. Very funny. Yeah, come on out, whoever you are. What the fuck? Go away. Ah! Ah! Help! Oh my god, it's real. Well, uh, my condolences to, uh, Mike and, uh, his surviving family. I mean, it's dangerous work going out and checking out the Bigfoot, and sometimes it's life-threatening to be dealing with such a big animal, and you know what they say about men with big feet? They'll literally devour you alive. I think that's the saying. Maybe not. Anyways, on to the after show. First off, we have an email for a episode suggestion from a viewer. Marissa Hill writes, Hi, have you guys thought about doing an episode on biker gangs? They're culty, secretive, and way more prevalent than you might think. Plus, you know they kill people all the time, but no one really talks about it. How's that for true crime? If you need some backstory or info about prevalent cases, I know a lawyer and an author who would love to chat with you and provide some background on recent infiltrations, including Charles Falco's infiltration of three biker gangs in California. He's now in the WPP, and they made a TV show all about it called Gangland of Recunder. Pretty rad, right? I think so. Anyway, let me know what you think, and if you want to talk to my colleague about all her knowledge of all things organized crimes. Cheers, Marissa. P.S. I'd have to share my grandma's cookie recipe, but then I'd have to kill you. Um, well, depending on how good the cookies are, that might be worth it, as long as I'm allowed to eat a couple before my untimely death. But anyways, on to the main part of the email. Um, I've, I've played with the idea of doing a biker gang episode, because there's so much lore and culture and history behind them. Like, they almost are their own little subculture living with our own, and they have their own traditions and their own initiation rituals and all that, and I think all that is interesting in kind of a human cultural perspective, plus they're they're clever and organized in a way, the way they've been surviving for so long and doing all their illegal activity and all that, and they're still able to uh, be out there. Now, the, the stipulation is there's some gangs out there that have no problem finding out people who talk shit or about them and ending their life. So I know I know that uh, the boys from last podcast on the left, they want to do an episode on biker gangs. And uh, when they did an AMA on Reddit, they said that they the biker gang they selected to do the episode on, they found out that people who talk about them ended up dead sometimes. So they declined to do that. So I'll have to just find a gang of bikers that 
don't want to come all the way up to Canada to kill little old me. But yeah, I love the idea, and I think I'll be writing you back to inquire about your colleague and the information that they can provide. Thank you very much. Next up, we got a voicemail from Emma. Now, Emma has been, you know, keeping her Twitter game strong and following us on on uh, Twitter and retweeting our stuff and responding and giving us some love. And, you know, when I'm sitting in my recording studio and editing audio for hours on end, you know, going back and looking at all the support we get from fans on Twitter and all that, it's just, it's it's revitalizing. Um, it's more to feed my own ego than anything, but, oh man, I, I tell you, a little ego feeling gets another hour or two of editing out of me, so we sure as hell appreciate our fans to give us a little love. Anyway, here's her voicemail. Hello, Ood, Sage, and Leon. It is Emma. Uh, I wanted to say hi, and that I love your guys' show. I appreciate all that you guys do with your lives, and what I'll have you. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye. I have no suggestions, and I have nothing else to say, but thank you. And no suggestions needed. We love getting voicemails like this just as we love getting voicemails with suggestions and feedback and all that stuff. And it's for the simple reason that when you're making a podcast, I'm sure other podcasters can sympathize with this, sometimes it feels like you're just yelling into the void and you're hearing nothing back. And getting a voicemail like we just got from Emma where she, you know, gives us some props and gives us some thanks and all that, it's like screaming into the void and hearing an echo back. It's nice to hear. It really is. Anyways, that's all I've got for the after show this time. Uh, we'll have some more next time with Bigfoot Part 2, and that's where we start to get down and dirty with the evidence, or lack thereof. You'll have to find out. Uh, make sure to follow all our social medias. If you go to ovpod.ca, and at the bottom of that page, you'll see our Facebook group, our Twitter, our Instagram, our Facebook page, and that's where we'll be posting all the bonus content. So... Basically what happens every week, if I put an episode up about Bigfoot, we're going to be featuring videos and articles and images of Bigfoot all week long just to give you that extra dose. And since Bigfoot is a two-parter episode, you're going to get two weeks worth of bonus content from Bigfoot. Anyways, that's all I've got this week. Thank you very much for taking part of your day to tune in. Um, Yeah, thank you for listening to Three Idiots Talk About a Giant Hairy Ape. Have a good weekend.